Hey guys, Richard at Reese.com, and we are here in ACI Aquaculture. And we had many complaints in the past on some of my other video of doing the calc washer and ACI method. And that we didn't really properly go into detail on how Chris doses calc washer into his system. So I got hold of Chris right now, and he's gonna show you step by step on his method of dosing calc washer into all of the system. Now, mind you, that you have to do it accordingly to the dosage and the water volume of your system. And then you just have to take it step by step and make sure that you follow the, you calculate this correctly, okay? And then make sure, double, tri double triple, make sure, okay? Exactly. Without further ado, I'm gonna hand this microphone over to Chris and he's gonna explain his method. Chris? Thanks, Richard. So we dose caulk washers very simple. This is a 55 gallon barrel. It's dosing on A and we have this plastic cover over top of it to help keep from atmospheric CO2 getting into it to ruin the caulk, the caulk mixture. As you can see down inside, even though we have the cover, we still get this film on our water, which is carbonates. It ruins the solution. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we only allow enough solution for three days because we don't want it compromised. We have a float. This float then in turn sits on top of the uh, water and pulls the effluent from the surface. That way we know we're not getting down into the caulk slurry at the bottom when you have settlement. Fill that up, measure the pH, make sure it's between 12.4 and 12.44. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much the simplicity of mixing up your caulk washer. About 6.5 grams per gallon if you're using a high purity caulk washer. Our dosing line then is in there, pulling from the surface, goes all the way over to the apex, doses, pumps it back into the sump. Our caulk washer dosing is done strictly by pH. So we have a pH probe that is in our system. We make sure that probe is dialed in and calibrated as often as possible and to ensure accuracy. We put our programming for a dosing pump with Apex. Apex programming for 24 hours. We put in two times double our evaporation. Here's why. If you're dosing by pH, your pH is suppressed from the time sometime after your lights go out to sometime right after your lights come on. That should be 12 hours if you run a 12 hour light cycle. So if you program just your evaporation for that 24 hour period of time, you'll never dose your evaporation in the 12 hour period of time. So you double it so that you know when your dosing is gonna commence and when it's gonna stop is in that 12 hour period so you only are dosing half of what your programming actually is. It's pretty simple. Just convert your gallons that you evaporate into mLs and set, double it, set it in your unit, in your apex, put your pH set point in, whatever your average is for the day when you start it. So if it's say, in some cases it's 8.0, you put that in as the set point to start dosing and to stop dosing. It's one rule. Do not put multiple rules in your apex. If you do that because you think about redundancy, you're gonna ruin the method. It will not work. I repeat, it will not work. So many people have come to me with all their rules. I said, delete line one, two, three, and five. They do, oh my gosh, it's working all of a sudden. I told everybody that from the beginning. One simple rule for both the apex, for the pH, and you're done. It's that simple. I have a couple of questions. So you said that you, don't, you extend this down to only up to a certain amount so that you don't get the bottom slurry. So you're not, you're not recommending people to use the slurry toward the bottom, right? No. I, I, the slurry is, there's too much unknown. Mm -hmm. There's too many variables in the caulk washer that you're dosing that's not dissolved. What happens once it hits your system? You know, if it's undissolved caulk washer, will it go in the solution? Will it settle somewhere? Will it eventually go in the solution? We don't know those, the outcome of that. There's people using caulk slurry. I've seen people tank, crash their tanks with caulk slurry. I've never seen anybody crash their tank with my method in two and a half years. Mm -hmm. It's all done by pH. You should not have those issues unless there's some other programming in there yeah. that will ruin the, the original programming that I have developed for it. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Now, um, another, another thing is that do you mix it, do you stir it at, at all? Never. never. Mix it once, uh -huh. it settles, it doses, fill it back up, more caulk washer added, stir it up, it settles, done. You don't have to stir it continuously. Caulk stirs, people get complacent with caulk stirs. If you have to physically fill your vat up every three or four days, you should never have any issues. If you're using a caulk stir, you'll get complacent. I promise you, you will. Mm -hmm. And you will not monitor the pH in that caulk stir. And all of a sudden, you won't be able to keep your pH where it is. Your selenium will fall. 
and you won't have any, you'll have major issues because you got complacent using a caulk stirrer. Your caulk stirrer will be the downfall to your system if you're trying to do my method. I've seen it happen more than one time, I promise you. If you have a vessel you have to fix every single time you have to fill it up, that keeps that from happening. It's kind of like redundancy. Fill your vat up, don't get lazy. Don't try to make it easier than what it really is. Gotcha. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. This, is, this has been Chris's method, his personal method of how to dose cockwasser. And for those of you guys who watched the video previously and didn't get that information, now you do. And I'm sorry that it has taken so long to get back to you guys, but Chris does live about four hours away each way. <laughs> so it, it has taken a little bit. So I apologize for that, but I, here I am. And we're, gonna, we're here to set the record straight and provide the right information for you guys. So once again, thanks for watching, guys. And you guys have a great day. Thanks. Have a great day.